Wi-Fi coverage here and everything, Connie. Mm -hmm. Okay, everyone, welcome. Here we go. Okay. I guess I could give it, I'll give the, the elevator music one more minute. <laughs> Usually it's Connie that calls in and she's in person, so we probably good to go. And uh, she thinks it's dinging, but she'll turn this off now. Okay, good. Uh, Steve, are you, um, is, are you okay? Can you hear? <laughs> Can we hear you? No. It's very loud. Oh, there. Oh, it is? Oh. So it must be from your end because I, my machine is usually not very loud. Okay. Yeah, okay. you must have your volume up. Yeah. Let me see what's set with this thing here. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And we have others. Let me see. I don't mean to have this and get they have to go into a waiting room and to be admitted. That's odd. I have to reach. Too bad that. Here's Marshall, too. How are you, Marshall? I'm doing fine. Hi, Marshall. Good. We're just um, figuring out the machine. I didn't mean to. It looks, it's, if she's here digging again, it means someone's in the waiting room. But that's Please. probably well, that's joining us today. We'll see. Okay, good everyone. Welcome. So I see Connie. Who else is there? Just Connie and me. Yeah. And, okay. and Steve. Oh, Steve is on the. Um, can you see others in the Zoom too, or just just? If, oh. if you press it, there he is. Hi, Steve. How are you doing? Hi. How are you? It's fine. Thank you. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Great. So I have to figure out my settings later because it shouldn't have to go into a waiting room, but that's okay. Why, why is Steve big and Marshall small? Um, I, so I think I think Marshall's using his iPhone. Oh, oh. oh. Uh, my iPhone, yeah. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a narrower. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Connie's going to be a tech, she's gonna, her next career is going to be in technology, but she's, <laughs> she's resistant to God calling her to technology, but she'll be leading the way. Mm -hmm. hey, remember, remember the story of Jonah, you can't escape. <laughs> oh, <right>. boy. <laughs> you just can't keep an old, teach an old dog. Now, oh, baloney, as no. Steve said, you're so bright, you can do anything you'd like. But you choose to well, focus. Well, that's why I choose to read books. I know, that's right, exactly. Do you know that I read all of Trollope in the 90s? Trollope? I don't, I don't even he's, know that. He's my favorite author. Huh. Oh, oh, they're wonderful. Maybe he's also on P PBS. Don't think so. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Don't the way we, out. the way we live now is the best. Huh. Oh, I'm reading Trollope now too. Which I'm, one? I'm reading it right through to the beginning. Which one? And I'm reading Phineas Finn at the moment. And I read Can You Forgive Her and the uh, Eustace Diamonds. I think it's just absolutely wonderful. Well, if you, you read, read Phineas, have you read the, uh, well, the thing is you have to... novels, Barchester Towers. Yeah, and yeah, Martin. yeah. I read, I, I read them all, read but, a few but of Marshall, them. I'm enjoying the political novels, and of course, my wife and I, through my mother and friends, are huge fans of Angela Thurkel, who took all these yeah, I read some of those into the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. Yeah. Um, so it, it's fun to see their ancestors in the mid-19th century. The thing about all of those novels is that you have to read them in the right sequence. So if you're reading, exactly. I've got them all, if, if, if you want to borrow one, if you haven't read something in the right sequence. I have all the political novels, and I think, you know, I think I have about... 80% of the Barchester novels, but I'm not sure. Yeah. And then I have some weird ones that I've never heard of that I've picked I up too. in my great book sale. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Welcome, everyone. Okay, let's, we're going to get started now because we're on Facebook, too. And so this week, it's um, October 4th. Instead of the usual uh, lectionary, because it's a Feast of St. Francis, 
and we have um, Blessing of the Animals, which is, I was shocked when I came here, and the Blessing of the Animals was inside the church during the Eucharist. And I know some yeah. people make faces about that, even, and then, and then Marsha doesn't prefer it. Me, I'm famous for it, but I have no complaints this year. The dogs were good. That's right, outside. Yeah, so. They were all good. I know they're all, they're all good except one that bit me, but that was. <laughs> well, that's that dog. Right. That but Victoria, Victoria Harvey sang in the choir, and her dog dutifully walked right up beside her and didn't make a sound. I know, that's right. So sweet. I know, it's precious. Okay, so we won't have the usual colic appointment for this Sunday, but rather I'm going to use the colic for joy in God's creation. And then the readings today um, are Genesis 1, 20 through 25, right, the book of Genesis, what, chapter 1, 20 through 25, just a little snippet. We have Psalm 104, verses 25 through 35, that's found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 736. Yeah, so what, 104, this is Psalm 25 through 35, and then the Gospel is Matthew 11, 25 through 30. And you'll see it's diff that's another, another aspect of St. Francis that gospel focuses on rather than the animal aspect. So here's this uh, prayer for joy in God's creation. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. With our spirit. Let us pray. Well, Heavenly Father, who has filled the world with beauty, open our eyes to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation may learn to serve thee with gladness for the sake of him to whom all things were made, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, since you answered with thy spirit, I use the right one version of that, joy in God's creation. <laughs> Liturgically consistent. And, uh, okay, great. So, um, Connie, maybe you can... Um, lead the psalm when we get to that point. Mm -hmm. And maybe, Steve, you could read the gospel when we get to that point. Marshall, I know you, you have to leave yeah. earlier. You said, you want to read the Genesis passage for us? Do you have a Bible with you? Can I, can I, make, a, can I make a suggestion? Sure, Steve. It's, I think it's very important that we read the Genesis in the King James Version. Oh. <laughs> it's done, and I'll tell you why. This is Nantucket. It talks about, and God created great whales. <laughs> Those weenies who wrote the other translation said something like sea monsters. Come on, guys. It was whales. <laughs> you know, why don't you, I don't have my King James here. I'm reading from the bystander, and I think that that makes a lot of sense. Okay. All right. I also think that when we get to the gospel, starting... In the previous paragraphs, makes sense because that's where he talks about um, the great uh, Leviathan in the sea, which he created for sport. I love that's that. Cool. I think we need to start a paragraph early. But anyway, so we can swap. I'll do the Genesis. Okay. Okay. A reading from the book of Genesis. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Okay. So it's just a, it's a, just a little snippet, of course, to uh, celebrate the blessing of the little creatures. 
and um, don't expect to see my sister arrive. But, you know, I could bring over, I could bring over some scallops, maybe little little sea monsters. And, uh, <laughs> I was out this morning, everybody. I was out this morning at. Uh, I left, got up at five twenty-five. Was out on the water by six fifteen. Mm -hmm. Still dark out there, and then nice watch, nice sunrise. Took me a couple of hours to get like an eighth of a bushel, but it was just being out there was so beautiful. So I have to find, they're, they're hiding on me this year. I have to, they, they move around on you, so. They know you. Yeah, I know. Yes. I was, so I was a, a beginner block in the past. Uh, yeah. Well, I got, at least I got a couple of so was the speed of the thing. I got some, I got a meals, a couple meals worth at least, um, but I want to get more so I can share, of course. But um, yeah, so but it was just serene being out there and on the water. And I was the first one out there, and then didn't see anybody in the harbor. Then a um, couple guys showed up in a boat. They were up not that far away. Then a couple of divers too. Mm -hmm. And what one of the divers said after he looked around for a while said, "You know, there's somewhere. Big <laughs> you got to keep looking at other locations because there's somewhere." <laughs> I think the wind might have pushed them all around. You know. Yeah. And I think the wind has been coming out of the south. So I don't think diving is hmm? What was that, Mark? I think diving is easy. It shouldn't be allowed. I, I, another question. I think people should do what you do, Max. <laughs> uh, or you give the scallop a sporting right. chance. And Max, don't you regard scalloping as the eighth sacrament? <laughs> <laughs> as part of my spiritual practice. And I told you we had a... I had to, I guess it was a vegetarian that um, wanted, you know, I should be sensitive to the scallops. And so I said, my, our treasurer Martin said that scallops only have a two-year life cycle. So, and so we get them in the second year. They die over the, you know, there's the winter anyways by the spring. So he said, you're doing them a favor by, by bringing them home with you. I think it gives, it gives them extra purpose in life to bring joy. In their, late, in their later years, in their later months of life, to bring joy. <laughs> they get eaten and they begin to become an Episcopalian. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Um, Some I, ve vegetarians eat shellfish. I yeah, mean, they're, really? Oh, yeah. they're not true vegetarians. Yes. Yeah. No. And of course, scallops, scallops are the muscle. You know, the, it's, it's the hinge that we eat rather than the stomach and all. So it's less. I don't, I don't know if it's kosher, but it's less, it's less unkosher. Well, kosher would be no scallops at all. Yes, I think so. Even yeah. though we're eating the hinge. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so one of the do, a do if, I could, uh, if I could make a comment on the um, passage itself, um, in verse twenty-one, that, that beautiful, the beautiful Nantucketish lines, and God created great whales. Yeah. Um, Sometimes when I, when you talk to people that are agnostics or atheists, and they'll say, oh, come on, you can't believe all that stuff in the Bible, can you? And, and I say, well, yeah, I kind of do, and um, in different ways. But um, so sometimes I like to just shock them by saying, well, for example, the book of Genesis, which they regard as the most controversial and silly and stupid one. Uh -huh. I think, yeah, I, yeah, that's good stuff. I believe that. And I said, but it's the sense in which I believe it. And, and I said, for example, in this, in this um, verse, the, the first three words in the English are so powerful. And God created great whales. They didn't, we, we're not just an accident. We didn't just appear um, on the third rock from the sun. That's that's irreligious. <laughs> God, God, God will the universe into being, and He created it. You can talk about evolution. I mean, that's fine. Yeah. Because God is a very clever fellow, and He could have in, invented evolution too. Exactly. We believe that, in that's both. Not, exactly. That's not the point. The point <laughs> is point. that. That it, it, in the kind of 100th Psalm, it says, it is he that hath made us, and not we yeah, ourselves. Yeah, yeah. And I think there's an awful lot of people running around the 21st century who think they've made themselves, or they've made the universe. 
and they need the humility of understanding the beauty of the fact that God created us. Total agreement. <laughs> I'm into that. Excellent. Yeah, and I, and I think, you know, um, sadly, a lot of uh, early on religion kind of, um, it made it either or with science. And that's such a, that's so, so silly because, you know, God, is, we, we can be enlightened by the Holy Spirit in our science, and we better, you know, to my thinking, we better understand God continues to create um, and continues to um, to transform. And, and we, and so, like, like you said, it's a, um, if you get stuck in that everything was done in six days on the seventh day rest, you know, yeah. Yeah, rather than the, yeah. rather than the millions of years, but you know, but for for God, millions of years is, is six days, and yeah. uh, and also it, it, it God continues. It makes to, us it makes us less lonely. It, it, we have a loving Creator. We're not just an accident that that occurred in space. Yeah. I did. I did know someone actually a close relation who told me one time that if he did, could not believe the literal truth in our own sense of these first chapter of Genesis, he would entirely lose his entire faith. And I thought that was so incredibly sad. Yeah. And it, it was based on something that had to mean only what our minds can receive of it meaning and really didn't allow very much room for the greatness of God or the fact that the whole concept of time to God, God is entirely out of time. I mean, you right. just start with that. And he, he, God is eternal in both directions. And so I was reading something the other day, a book that somebody gave me that talked about um, we feel like it's been a long time, 2,000 years since Christ died, and that nothing has happened. And they said, well, they were reading a science fiction book that was taking place in 40,000. If you take the t our 2,000 and add 38,000 to it, you're there. <laughs> so the, the, the story has only begun. You know, The creation yeah. continues. The, the love of God continues through that, and it's, it's, it's outside of time. And I like the that. The story is yeah, if Christ's return is is not for another eight or ten thousand years, then we are the early Christians. Right. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> the point of this book. Man. We are the we are the early Christians. we are the early Christians. And make some of the same kinds of mistakes. <laughs> and to, and to, again, it's, it does no justice to the Bible to take it literally. Uh, I mean, it contradicts itself. There's there's actually two two creation stories here. In the book of Genesis, and there's all kinds of things. And but it's 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 a it's a, I don't know, this is a new expression, a super truth. You know? It's a super. It, it does it, it reveals the truth, um, and it, in metaphor and poetry, and, right. and a lot of it is uh, our old hymns, you know, song, um, and it's um, and it's, and it's living. It's a living word. What does it say to us now? Is different than what it said right. two thousand years ago. What what was you know what it revealed. Um, and so, yeah, so I love, um, Ollie, my wife Ollie would always read, um, the story of creation. I guess it was, um, it was either Advent Lessons and Carols or, um, or during Lent, um, or Easter Vigil, maybe both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we read Genesis maybe in both of those vigils. Yep. Um, so she was always, um, she would always be the first one up to read, you know, to read. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With all the different. It's always, it's always. Lessons and carols, Genesis. Yeah, it's lessons and carols Genesis. Yeah. So yeah, so I think it's a. I think it's going to be a. It's going to be a wild uh, Sunday for us, with, even with at a distance. Um, with, with animal chaos, <laughs> blessed <laughs> chaos, and. Uh, I don't have any animals at my house now. I can't believe it. Ah. I had six <laughs> all summer. I had six. Erect of animals. Yeah. And one thing, you know, we and it, again, I'm I'm very much concerned about God's creation. You know, we need to be stewards of creation, not to be so dominant. You know, we again um, that we would, you know, we, we tend tend to want to subdue everything rather than become to be part of creation, and um, and we're asked to be proper stewards. And, but I am optimistic. Again, you've heard me talk about, in, uh, I grew up 
outside of Providence, Rhode Island. When my mom was young, she could swim uh, near our house, um, Edgewood, Edgewood section of Cranston. Then when I was growing up, your legs would fall off. If you, <laughs> if you, your skin would burn right off your legs if you swam in that water. And then they started um, enforcing laws that they already had, even environmental laws about discharging into the Providence River, which goes up to the Narragansett Bay. And then my, and then my brother Johnny, who was a uh, quahogger, we did the win in winters in Rhode Island, go out in this little, it looked like a lobster boat, little lobster boat, and big long rakes, much longer than scallop rakes, and pull up quahogs. And that sort of the open waters, they kept testing, and things got cleaner and cleaner. You know, every tide that would come in once they stopped polluting yeah. would start, would cleanse. And, and so I'm confident we saw it happen now with, um, with this pandemic, when, when things were shut down around the world. Yeah. People said they, yeah. could, you know, they could see uh, the Himalayas. They, yeah. you know, the, the, yeah. they, could, they could see mount, mountain peaks that they could never see before. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, the world, if, when we get our act together, a little more environmentally, God will continue to transform creation and renew it. So, and God renewed the face of the earth. I don't know if that's in our psalm today. It's in one of the psalms, right? God renews the face of the earth. And I had such a sense of that. Um, even, even you know, I've only been here for two years now, but even down at um, Steps Beach, I noticed in the spring, because there's so little boat traffic because of the pandemic at first, it just, it just seemed a, a greater, the water was more clear in, in, this, in Nantucket Sound. You know, it looked like tropical waters. Mm. Um, yeah, so anyways, renewal of creation. But the, the, um, the progress in uh, Providence, that was all due to uh, the good work of Mayor Cianci, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, that's right. Mayor Cianci. That's right. The environmentalists had, had to, the environmentalists had to pay them off. They must have big bribes to, to make this thing. My, again, my grandmother. We moved, we moved her from Manhattan, you know, from East Seventy Second Street to Providence. My church had built a big, um, like seventy five apartment, um, not assisted living, like independent, fully independent, but they had a nice, inexpensive dining room on the first floor. So my grandmother moved from her, you know, being living solitary to be have others that she can go outside and smoke with, you know, <laughs> outside, outside the building and made some new friends. But she loved Mayor Cianci, loved him, loved him. Lots of people did. Yeah. When they do, when they do the play about him, which they, of course I can't oh, do I now know. because yes. it's a... I want um, to see that the, play. Um, you know, it's a, a playhouse in Providence. Oh, Trinity right? Square. Trinity Square. Yeah. People got up and cheered at the end. They love it. Yeah, after Buddy was finally arrested, <laughs> arrested. Of course, you know, it's Rhode Island. You know, it's a, it's a, this is how we do business, CI. You know, it's um, sadly. This is probably one of the few times that, this is probably one of the few times that the good mayor has been mentioned in a Bible study. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. And so anyway, Buddy, uh, but if, if you've been to Providence, it just says Buddy. Um, you know, like, they have all these little bridges. You know, Providence is the largest, is the widest bridge in the world because the city is built on the Providence River. And, it, you know, our, our church, um, Grace Church in Providence, had giant pilings for us. Like you're, built, you're building a dock or something. All the pilings mm. in the ground, mm. then the brownstone on top of that. Um, you know, brownstone building. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so it's a, so he uncovered parts of the river and built... It looks like we call it the Paris of New England, my wife and I call it. <laughs> Paris of New England. So there's all these little bridges everywhere, at the bottom of College Hill especially. And it's precious. So, yeah, so he, I know Buddy said, uh, someone gave me the, uh, it's something, I forget what it's called now. Someone, I had a baptism in the sound, and they do, I was from Rhode Island, they gave me the book about Buddy CNC. I, <laughs> I, have to, I have to find out, I can't think of the name of it, but. I heard his, um, his wife it was on a talk show recently. Oh, really? It would have curled your hair. Yeah, was it his, his, first, his first wife? Would have, yeah, there's some wild stories anyways. We won't go into into those stories, but yeah, buddy. It was interesting. But you know, Mayor Curley in Boston in the 20s was re-elected to office while he was serving in a federal prison. <laughs> and so, but the city of Boston yeah. for his style in a federal prison. Oh, See, a, I never knew that. His, his, his slogan was, vote often and early for James Michael. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
I like that one. Should we, should we get back to the Bible? <laughs> yes. And so, um, okay, good. So let's, I think it's time for, uh, Genesis is lovely. So it gets a little snippet. But I do, um, I do love the whole reading. It's worth going through um, in one city, those that are at home, book of Genesis. So why don't we turn to our psalm now. And let me see. Did you say we cut the psalm like off to, too, too quickly? I'd like to see Tony start with verse 26. Yeah. I think that's a good Well, it's 20, we start with 25, so it includes 26. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yes. We can, I couldn't read it. Too small. Oh, yeah. The, the, the Leviathan is there. I think that's 27, yeah. maybe, or something. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, good. So what page do we say it is, Connie? 736. 736 in the prayer book. Or if you're using your Bible instead, it'll be slightly different translation up there in TV land. 736, the bottom of the page, Connie. And Connie will, will pray up to the asterisk, and we'll finish the verse, please. Okay. Um, 104. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In, In wisdom, wisdom you have you made them all. The, the earth, earth is full of your creatures. creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea with its living things, too many to number. Creatures both small and great. There, are, there move the ships and there is that Leviathan. Which, which you have made for the sport of it. <laughs> All of them look to you to, to give them, them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You, you open your hand, hand, and they are, they are filled, filled with good, good things. things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take, you take away their breath, breath, and they die, and, and return, return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And, and so, so you renew you the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May, May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches, he touches the mountains, mountains and they smoke. smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Okay. You hide your face in there, terrified. <laughs> it says, it. oh, mm -hmm. you hide your face in there. Interesting. Huh. Mm -hmm. So, Max, he says here, you open your hand, you give it to them, and they gather it. I think mm -hmm. it took me a long time to get an eighth of a bushel. So, I mean, <laughs> he was holding his, uh, he was holding scallops in reserve. Maybe he just will need it more another time. Well, he's, he's pacing, yeah. Last year I went right to the very last day of March, which is the end of, of scalloping season. I went all the way through because my waders my waders leak though. I had more I had more water in my waders today than the harbor had, I think. I had, I didn't realize until I got closer to the shore and I had these giant I looked like the Michelin, remember the Michelin man? You know, I was like this giant and so I had to like actually stop in the water and uh, and take them off and empty them out. And I, then I had my pajamas on underneath. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fiasco. But the Lord provides. And, you know, and also core hogs um, jumped into my basket too. But the core hogs wanted to have a, a purposeful life. Oh. And so I have about just maybe six or eight core hogs, but enough for either some stuffies or um, just maybe a nice clam sauce on a little pasta. Mm -hmm. you know? Yummy. Whoa, whoa. We came over on the boat yesterday talking about being uh, terrified that God hides his face. And we were on the, the, the auto boat, and we, led, we were sitting in harbor longer than usual, and the fast ferry had left and couldn't go. They got out and had to turn around and come back. Ooh. But when we got up to Great Point, there was somebody out there in a fishing boat um, doing 
fishing in the rip at Great Point, and I thought, you know, that's a lot of trouble to go through to fish because it was six and eight foot waves. So it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's uh, interesting what we will what we will put up with. Yeah, when I was out there this morning, I was thinking, you know, I could probably just put waders on and stand out in the water, and then wait until next month and buy the scallops from Glidden's. <laughs> And then, and so, because now I have to go home and open them too. It takes me twice as long to open as does to catch them. And uh, yeah, if I'd gotten more scallops, I would have asked Ned, Ned White to come over. You know, Ned and Randy. Ned, he he opens up four times. You know, because he pops half them in his mouth raw. You know, why he's not doing it. You know, and uh, as is Paul, Paul Bennett too. He can he 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 pops it and catches. I mean, he can toss it into his mouth like he's. Taught like he's a circus, circus performer, <laughs> right out of the shell, you know. But anyways, Michael Kopko, who was a select but then it heads the one of the theater, White Heron Theater, he can do that. He uh, spent a number of years uh, helping to support himself over these scholars, so he can pop them over, toss them in his mouth, shut them, and get rid of the shell, and have another one before you get going. You know? so. Yeah, I could never, you know, in Rhode Island, a lot of my friends, a lot of my friends. Um, Moms especially worked in factories where it's piecework. You know, you had to if you didn't make right. a certain amount of jewelry, you'd get paid a certain amount. If I worked piecework with opening scallops, I would be <laughs> I'd be in desperate situation, that's for sure. You would not, you would not get your food in due season. No, I'd not get my food in due season. I'd be wouldn't be living on Nantucket, I'd be in Fall River, which nothing wrong with that, but but I wouldn't be able to afford this. But whatever else we may say about Psalm one oh four it is a beautiful, beautiful piece of poetry. Yes, it is. Yeah. I mean, the it, language is I mean, gorgeous. there's just stuff to treasure. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. Yeah. I mean, that's just, that's fun. I think I, that's actually one of the few times where they get it a little better than the KJV, because uh, <laughs> the, the James says uh, to, to play therein or something. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. yeah. That's, it's, um, and, and the touching the mountains and they smoke. Isn't that and, and yeah. precious, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. He Absolutely. looks at the earth yeah. and it trembles. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yes, I love this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, does everyone, um, I'll post it later for those that are on Facebook, but it took me a, it took me a year and a half to realize that we have a whale image in our church. Does anyone know where that is? Have you noticed yeah. that we have, a, we have an image of a whale? Where? And it's even it's spouting, um, and, it's, and it's kind of I guess it's kind of blue gray. It's one of our one of our creation windows in the side chapel. It's a bottom panel. Oh, yeah, yeah, on yeah. the way out, kind of the chapel's open. Oh. You should look at it. Yeah. And so it's a decent sized whale. It's kind of abstract. Doesn't have a lot of right. um, yeah. definition, but sort of just, it looks like kind of a fanciful whale, like a cartoon whale, rather than something that came back from uh, that we brought back from our, our travels around the world. Um, as whalers, you know, in Nantucket. But yeah, but it's pretty sweet. It's fanciful. Okay, I love our creation I, windows. Uh, Go ahead, Steve. I have something about the windows. You you were kind enough to, to let me read that book about the windows this summer. Yes. And one of the most hilarious of uh, UBKs I got, a UBK is a useless bit of knowledge. <laughs> uh, so one of my UBKs I got for that was it, right when you come into the church, there's a picture of uh, there's a depiction of window of Saint Paul approaching Rome. Yeah. Just so that the viewer will know that it's Rome, the the artist that designed the stained glass put in. Now you think I'm going to say the Colosseum or the Pantheon? No, I I, I know no, what you're going to no, say. No. It's got Saint Peter. Yeah, it's the Basilica. It's yeah, Saint, Saint Peter's Peter. Basilica. <laughs> And That's it's got true. Saint Peter's Basilica. <laughs> the old ones with the, the Renaissance. Oh, yes. My. Yeah. I uh, know that was uh, that's a wild shot. I was. Yeah, uh, it's like, oh. it wasn't there then, so I didn't do that. That's nice. That reminds me of um, what my bishop uh, said. Um, oh, what was? He, he had a joke about that. Too. Oh, he said, he said, um, what bridge did Verrazano see? when he sailed up the Hudson River. My bishop in Philadelphia asked that. Max, what bridge did Verrazano see as he sailed up the Hudson River? And I was like, uh, Verrazano Bridge? He said, no, 
There were no bridges. <laughs> there, were no, there, were no, there were no bridges yet. <laughs> it's like, darn. You know? <laughs> My bishop loved that joke. <laughs> okay, we're in pretty good shape. But yeah, this is a great, um, beautiful, beautiful psalm. That's one, obviously, a sign for the first feast of St. Francis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course I, I should, didn't bring it over today. I have my my Saint, my Marvel comic book, Saint Francis, Brother of the Universe, and so I'll have it. I have it with me. It's my show and tell of always for Saint Francis Day. You know, oh, yeah. I I bought I had a whole stack of I bought a little box of them years ago for for youth ministry in, in uh, Philadelphia, and uh, so I still have I still have one of the left. It's like twenty five cents. It says it you know, stamped in the front, oh, yeah. Marvel comic those, books. Those, those are great with. When I was in grad school, uh, one of the great professors who, who was world famous as an expert on uh, Greek and, and on Homer, uh, he used to bring in the classics comic book of the Iliad and the Odyssey oh. <laughs> and pass it around for our enjoyment. <laughs> Oh, I had a huge collection of Batman comics. I think what they could use for that. Oh, I know, yes. Yeah, we had some. Who oh, was that? Reggie. And then those funny. What were those comics? Oh, Reggie and Veronica. Yeah, Reggie and Veronica. Yeah, we, I remember sitting on you know the the ferry from Newport to Jamestown. You know, be, again before Verrazano, when he was sailing to Newport, the Newport Bridge wasn't there. <laughs> we took a ferry back and forth to Jamestown. I did that in Newport. Lizzie must have must know that from her days. And so, anyways, I remember sitting out there in the parking lot of the Newport Ferry. You know, reading Reg, you know, Reggie and Veronica. <laughs> my my oldest sisters, I think, bought those. <laughs> I used to like I used to like the Disney ones. I liked Scrooge McDuck, which I think be, betokened my going into banking. Do you have a Do you swim in, in your swimming pool filled with money like Scrooge McDuck? <laughs> <laughs> when I think about liquidity, that's what I think about. <laughs> And I, I came home last week. I had, you know, we had a couple of weddings, and one, you know, I'm, I'm never, yet you know, as a priest, I'm not good at c collecting. I was much better as a wine salesman, collecting on bills, or whatever. Because you know, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to remind people that there's fees for weddings, or you know, funerals especially. I would never, you know, so many funerals, I never paid anything. That's fine. The church pays me, and, um, and so anyway, so one wedding, Ali said, do they know there's a fee? I said, you know. I don't think they do. I didn't, um, and so, so, and I didn't want to mention it at the, at the rehearsal, and I certainly wasn't going to mention it at the wedding. But it's, and then I was ready to leave. I just figured, oh, this is one of those weddings. That was, I'm a candy striper. They weren't parishioners, but they're, you know, friends of friends. Anyways, they handed me this big wad of twenty dollar bills. You know? <laughs> and so, I, and Ollie didn't expect me to get paid. She was kind of mad that I, I need like an agent, you know, Chris, have Christine call and tell. So anyways, I came home, and I just threw it up in the air in the kitchen, and they, they went all over the place. And she's like, what's that? I said, it's, rain, it's raining money. <laughs> they knew you were from, you were from uh, Rhode Island, so they knew he was paying you like cash. They knew that Ray oh, Patriarca yeah. would come get him if they, <laughs> I don't know if they didn't. Uh, God rest his soul. I used to live in Federal Hill when, when Ray Patriarca was alive uh, as a young adult, and... It was a very safe neighborhood, is all I can say. Very when, safe. When who was alive? Ray Patriarch. Oh, he Patriarch. was yes, oh. he was a, the oh. godfather of. Oh, um, I know. My New England, husband. New England. You know, he had a lot of connections, a lot of influence. I know. In Boston too. My husband. One of the books he did when he was a double day was My Life in the Mafia by Vinnie. What was his last name? Anyway, he used to call Tom from prison, and he'd get me on the phone at home, and he said, "This is Tom. This is Vinnie." I love when I was in Providence. I, I worked for the Providence Journal, and, um, and so we'd see we'd, we'd see a lot of these characters. And I was a truck driver, but it, and they liked us for some reason. Truck drivers. They um, you belong to the was. I, I you know I was standing in front of his. He had a the Patriarchers had a pinball business. You know, they leased pinballs machines, and you had to have one of their pinball machines in your bar. It wasn't an option, you know. In your, oh. um, and so I remember looking over, and he gave me a big smile, waved at me. I was sit, just sitting there in traffic, looking over. And there was the Godfather, and um, 
Yeah, but anyways, um, that's enough about Rhode Island, I guess. <laughs> and the mafia. And the, ma the mafia. And so, but they used to, of course, they would, they would walk, they would wait for women shop owners and walk them safely home, things like that when they really? got dark. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, yeah, they, yeah. Was, um, they had their yeah. own protection service going, that's for sure. Yeah. I think a lot of them were. Okay, so here we go with the gospel. Um, anything else related to that? Uh... Okay, uh, this is, I think, highly appropriate, great choice, because it's essentially the message of St. Francis, uh, but not to the animal. It's yes, the other Jesus. Uh, this is Matthew 11, verse 28, 29, and 30. Come to me, you all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I love that. Yes. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. Wasn't there more at the beginning? Yes, verse 25. Yes, yeah, so the gospel is Matthew eleven, twenty five through thirty. But that's the juicy part that Marshall said. But yeah. Um when you sent the notice out, you said it as a text and the writing was so small I couldn't read what Bible verses they were. So, oh sorry, yes, yeah. Oh no. Okay, well I'll go back to this for twenty five and then I'll read that again because it's so good. Okay, and good. That's how you just declared. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. That thou hast hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to babes. Yea, Father, for such was thy gracious will. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal it. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Beautiful. I'm reading the translation, the different devices. Well, Can you be interesting, because I'm the only Bible I have at home these days is the Revised Standard Version. So if well, you have uh, if you have a different version, it would be interesting. I have the new Revised Standard Version. And what was different about it? A collection well, it's different. It wasn't the oh, I have the King James. It just isn't. It's in one of my other places. So it's oh, like you, need a, you need a traveling King James. Right, there we are. I got a traveling King James. I have a free prayer book, so, see, so you don't need to worry about okay. that. Oh, but, uh, Mark, so the Mark, new Revised Mark, Standard Version is slightly different, kind of said. Yeah, what is it? Mark, uh, read, read chapter 28 again. Uh, verse 28. Yeah, I'm sorry. Come to me, all who are who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Oh, yeah. Well, now, this is, come to me, all you that are weary, which are actually like more than labor, and are carrying heavy burdens. I like that, too. I don't like are carrying. I, you don't? I think a lot of us are carrying heavy burdens. Oh, I do, too. No, 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 it's <laughs> not that. I, they, We're just criticizing the pros. I, I just, and so what's, what's I the other one? Pardon? Do 28 again. Come to me, all you who are heavy laden. All, come what? to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. Heavy laden, and I will yeah. Give you rest. Yeah. Now, what does it say, Connie, in the next? Because heavy laden here then goes into taking my yoke upon you in the next verse. What does it do about? Here, it's about, take, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay. Yeah, learn from me. And it says, um, my notes for this, in, in the, I'll use the um, Harper Collins Study Bible. Usually, It just says that um, in the rabbinic tradition, rabbis would use the yoke as a metaphor for the difficult but joyous task of obedience to the Torah, right, to Hebrew scripture, to the, to the law. Mm. Difficult but joyous. Love that, too, yeah. 
I once heard an interpretation of this, and I'm not sure it's right, but I heard someone say that um, Jesus is contrasting his his teachings, the sim- the beautiful simplicity of his teachings, with the incredibly complex dietary etc. laws that the Jewish tradition had eventually come up with, and then when he says, "My like like his two commandments: love God, love your fellow human being." things like that i don't do do, do you find any validity in that interpretation i'm not sure i do or don't i don't know what to think Mm. yeah well certainly jesus spoke against the purity laws and i mean so many people were made outcasts you could not be pure enough you know and um so certainly throughout the ministry of jesus he speaks against so so i could see that this could be especially if it was known that rabbis use the term yoke um to be you know joyous but difficult mm-hmm. obedience to the mm-hmm. Torah. Mm-hmm. But he, want, he might want to be saying here that his is less uh, less burdensome. Yeah. Yeah, and if you look at the passages immediately before this about um, uh, John and then the ones after this where the Pharisees are trying to catch him up on this, they're both sort of illustrations of the point that you made, Steve. My uh, 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 what I bring is not a heavy burden that requires you to watch everything that goes into your mouth right. or everything that, um, uh, you know, the, have you not read in the law on the Sabbath, on the pre, you know, that kind of stuff. It, it's simple, you know, it's simple. And um, you take it on, and you can even remember it this, you know, what should I do? Well, you know, right. Up. Another thing that, another uh, verse I find really interesting in here is 25. Um, At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. I like that. And and it's it's kind of what I've been saying, uh, which is certainly not original to me, but I heard from somebody else that, you, you, you can't be too dumb to be a Christian, but sometimes you can be too smart. Yeah, yeah that's... And that sometimes you just ought to relax and take it in, the simplicity and beauty of Jesus' message. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, the wisdom, remember I, 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 well, I mentioned it from Pierce in the Attic, I had, um, had a very interesting phone forum, you know, it was, a, it was a interactive on the phone, with my my dear friend, uh, Dr. Angela Belay, and you hear me quote Dr. Angela Belay a lot, but he talked about the fourth dimension. And so his point was maybe, you know, that, that real wisdom is beyond intellectualizing, um, it uses, you know, our brain, left brain is kind of orders things, right brain is more creative, we have the more primitive brain, our inner brain, which is the first first brain to develop, which is, um, you know, we, um, it's, a, it's a, what they call the lizard bra- brain, where you a- analyze, is it safe? Should I stay here? Are these my people? Should I run for it, right? Mm-hmm. F- fight or flight and everything in between. Um, and so, so he talked about our fourth, a fourth dimension, a fourth consciousness. He compared it to a spiral, kind of like a, a spring that, um, two springs, in, uh, like mirror images of each other that's kind of spiral up and down between the three aspects of your brain. Again, he's one that's dissected brains and studied brains. He's 85, been studying the brain since he was um, a teenager. And But Dr. Blair talked about that, this fourth consciousness. And, and I just feel that um, some of our conversation just reminded me of that. There's a wisdom. There's a wisdom in scripture. There's a wisdom in our faithfulness. Um, there's a truth beyond... Uh, analysis, which I guess you'd call faith, and you, and you saw on Sunday I had I had taken notes down in the stop and shop. I, I remember you, you saw this card in the stop, my stop and shop flyer, and it and it was just, I, I, didn't, I don't know this person yet. It's, it's um, they mentioned someone named Byron Katie. Byron who? Byron Katie. I'll have to, I'll have to look this person up, and it talked about how um, now you know with um, everything going on. 
in the world, you know, we're bombarded with information, we have to analyze, it's like too much information, it's hard to know what's true, right. and so he, he had this four, four questions, I can't even remember writing in the fourth one, he said, is it true, um, is it, are you absolutely sure it's true, this is for, you know, for things, absolutely sure it's true, um, how do you react because, it, because it, you know it to be true, and, and um, who would you, who would I be without that thought? Right? Is the thought of that truthfulness important to my world, my reality, my spiritual? Who, who would you be without? Who would I be without, without that thought, without exactly. believing that that's true? Is that interesting? Yeah. yeah. Is it true? Are you absolutely sure it's true? <laughs> what you know? Because it's true, how do you react? How does it make a difference in your life? And then who would you be without that thought? <clears throat> And it's, you know, this is the part of that discussion where it talked about how we're at a point now where we have to focus on, you know, nonviolent communication, uh, coming to terms with um, this, the lizard brain, or, you know, the, uh, they call it paleolithic emotions. Paleolithic, we still have caveman emotions. Um, and in, as I talked about on Sunday, medieval institutions, um, which, and it says that which privileges free speech without uh, knowing what is true or not, though, without, without inf information to, to back it up or to keep up with it. And then that our brains, um, oh, that um, we need to be almost, our technology is almost godlike, it said, and so that we need to transform ourselves to be more loving, prudent, wise, to have that inner wisdom as we're bombarded with information. What is that our technology is? Our technology, the technology is godlike. I would disagree and say some of our technology is demonic. It's demonic, yeah. like it's true. But also some of our technology, look, we're, I, I'm thinking it's, my friend, uh, Father, stuff too. yeah, exactly, my friend Father Harry, who had lung cancer hiding behind uh, his, his uh, breastplates or whatever, and somehow they, with a computerized scalpel up in Wilmington, Delaware, they were able to get, and, and Father Harry lived for 10 years when he had you know, stage four lung cancer, you know? Yeah. I think I was thinking more of Facebook. <laughs> that Facebook is that's 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 lizard brain technology. That's well, lizard brain. And God created great lizards. But always remember Marshall Marshall McLuhan's words, which I think of so often. The media is the message. The media is the message. And yeah. You can apply that to so many things, and then you understand why. It's Unfortunately, the media comes with an on-off button. You can yeah. turn it off. I'm recommending well, ne uh, Netflix. Again, everyone, Netflix, it's called The Social Dilemma. Have Lizzie show you this. The Social Dilemma, Connie. And it's, um, yeah, and it, it, it'll make you, st I use Facebook for Bible study <laughs> and to, uh, you know, for prayers for the addict. But I haven't been on my own Bible, my own personal Facebook page in the longest time. And that's good because on Facebook, if you like something, You'll be keep feeding. You're fed that incessantly. Right. You're just fed it, <laughs> which is, that's one reason we're so polarized now. Everyone's being fed what they think is the truth without any kind of discourse anymore, without any kind of compromise. It's just we're fed it. And again, it's not I, the Russians doing. It's not the Chinese. It's just computer. It's computers doing what they do. Mm -hmm. Is there? These al algorithms are reacting to how mm -hmm. we react. It, you know, it's just feeding mm -hmm. what we react to. So. So, is this something that you can get from that from Netflix? Yeah. Oh, good. My, my yeah. My Social dilemma. Just, Sadness. It's just out recently. I think it's about. It's it's really it's, it's a documentary more than a yeah, yeah, it's really yeah. a documentary. Yeah. Oh, but cool. first, you have to to uh, watch all of Game of Thrones. Then you then you can watch that. But again, I again, I, I, hated yeah, it. <laughs> I, I like Game of Thrones. I liked. So, <laughs> it's a little bit violence, isn't it? It's a little bit dark. Ah, but. A, I like the dragons. The dragons are cool. Now, um, yeah, and so again, on um, Facebook, when we're in Prayers from the Attic, our friend Sally Nash is on with us. Um, that's the good, the good, if it's used the right way, um, it, people connect in ways that they would not be able to connect, especially during a pandemic, but anytime with people are have health issues and are not traveling like they used to. And so that's the, um, that's not the demon, it's the, um, I just like to overstate things for rhetorical purposes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to run you for office one of these times. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, so I again, 
Good for sure. For sure. I have to be someplace else in five yep. minutes. Me too. See you all all next week. Okay, very good, okay, Marshall. Good Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Max, I wanted to just quickly ask you, I, I mailed something to the church to you. Did you get it? Yes, and I mailed you a thank you note for what oh, you mailed okay. to the church. Thank you so much. Through. I wasn't sure with all this crazy weather you've been having. No, thank you. Things are slow here, but yes, thank you. I, I like I like today's reading was was quite um, interesting too. It was it was you know like you said there. I just started reading this morning. Um, I think it came in the mail yesterday or of the, or the day before, and so it was. It talked about yeah about um, struggle and then the uh, the being on the other side of struggle and prosperity and, and you know yeah so as I remember it. Yeah, it seemed timely. I'm going to pray this prayer attributed to St. Francis. And so, you know, it's this prayer from, um, because this is the other aspect of St. Francis' life, of course, is his care for the poor and for outcasts. And not just, um, again, supposedly the black wolves in Italy walked with him and things like that. But, <laughs> but uh, birds I land on his shoulder. Like yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. The Lord be with you. With thy spirit. With thy spirit. Here's a prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. Be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we have pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen, Amen to that. I think we're pardoned even when we don't pardon, but that's my Protestant what radicalism. I think we're not, par we're not pardoned only because we pardon. It says, oh. it says, let me see, yeah. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, I think it's, it's pardoning that we're set free, certainly, from holding on to yeah. grudges and, you know. Mm -hmm. But also, I, I believe that we're forgiven through the work of Christ, not by earning it. Um, right. Yeah. I will see you Sunday. Hey, great. Very good. Give yeah. Joey our love, right. okay? And so good uh, seeing everyone on Facebook. I'll see... Oh, tonight Jonathan's on for prayers from the attic, and so tune in at 8.30 if you're able on Facebook Live, and then it's taped for later viewing, and our, our uh, Navy Chaplain intern, Jonathan, will be presenting, okay? Thanks so much for joining us, and uh, see you out there in the water. <laughs> Peace.